Good morning, everyone. I hope wherever you are right now on this bright and early Monday morning, you are enjoying your day, whether it's getting ready to work or just crawling out of your bed. It's another beautiful day out here for us, and today we're going to be talking about Durando, the Rampage Warrior. He's one of the new units that's going to be coming out with Miranda on the banner. We don't know if they're coming out this week or next week, but we do know that they will be coming together and they are the next banner that we are slated to get in Global. So you guys probably all know Durando as one of the most hated characters um, in the main story. <laughs> He's pretty much nobody's favorite. His main job is Viking. His second job is Monk. His third job is Gunner and his affiliation is of course in the Crystal Sanctum. His max HP is plus 25% and he gets a critical hit rate of plus 15. His Trustmaster reward is called the Great Axe of Slaughter and has a chance to inflict blind on the target with attacking. It's going to have HP 68, accuracy 12, and attack 114. It's definitely not going to be a weapon I would recommend. I think we do have better craftable weapons for this, and I think we do have weapons that are more easily accessible for you. His innate resistances are going to be negative 10 to slashing, 15% resistance to piercing, 15 resistance to blunt, negative 10% to missile, and negative 25% to magic. So he's pretty much weak to everything and anything that's in global right now. He has a 15% weakness to wind, so Yerma users, you are going to shred him, or Lucia, who comes out on the banner after his, will be able to just decimate him. He does have 10% resistance, though, to those Frederikas and Orlandos out there. He has a 50% resistance to blind, petrify. He is susceptible to stop, and he does have a little bit of a resistance to death. Taking a look at his stats here, he does have 1,784 HP with an additional plus 90. Now keep in mind, he does get that HP plus 25% on top of that. So he's gonna be sitting comfortably, probably somewhere around 2200. TP 105, AP 97, he does only get a movement of three and a jump of one. His attack is 185 plus 63, which puts him somewhere in the realm of about 250 with an additional attack plus 20%, which is gonna put him close to 300. Not over it though, I believe. Magical power is going to be low, agility even lower at 47. He is going to be one of the slowest units you could probably use. If you can get any piece of agility on him, you're going to want to do that. His dexterity is 149 plus 54. Luck is 114 plus 36. And then he has a critical hit rate of plus 20. And if you're keeping track, that means that his critical hit rate is plus 35 from his mastery ability. In terms of weapons, it's very similar to Yerma. Actually, we are going to recommend that Golden Axe plus 5. Critical, of course, with 18 critical hit on it. If you don't have access to that, I would actually recommend the Mithril Axe plus 5. Just a little bit less than the Golden Axe and a little bit easier to obtain when there's not a Golden Axe event going on. In terms of equipment, he pretty much has access to helmets and clothes. That doesn't mean he gets a hat. He just gets helmets and clothes. So when I'm looking at it, Looking at Golden Helm plus 5 for the shield is going to give a nice buff to defense. You're not going to lose any evasion there. But really, I think the Mithril Helm plus 5 is the most relevant. It also has missile attack resistance, which is going to save him a little bit from the weaknesses he has there. It gives an evasion plus 10. It doesn't give any defense, though, so that is going to be a little bit painful. Mirage Vest, on the other hand, also gives magic attack resistance. And you're going to be able to get Spirit 12, Defense 6 on the Barrier, or you could go the Shield and pretty much swap those stats. Of course, he can equip an accessory as well. I would recommend the Aim Ring, but I think, honestly, you're probably going to be using some sort of a TMR to try and balance out his stats, if that's even currently possible. Probably something with agility like the Boxer's Badge or something along those lines. He does have the Viking techniques, though, that we have Yerma. So he does get access to full throwing, which is also known as launch in global. So that will be an ability that he is going to be able to use. It is one of Yerma's powerfulest abilities, and it is nice to see another unit have access to this. I think I think I'm a little jealous that Yerma gets to use it and nobody else really has it. So it is nice to see another unit come in with that. He also has access to Tenacity, which is going to increase self-attack 
and defense and decreases evasion for three turns. You're probably going to be setting his passive Viking Mastery, which is going to increase max HP and attack and reduce AP gain as well. I think as long as you have enough AP to pop a launch as soon as you're within range of an enemy, you're probably going to be good. And with his low agility, an enemy is probably going to move forward in any type of PvP setting. So that low movement is not going to affect you as much. You'll probably just move after them and be able to take them out. He does have some interesting sub jobs with Monk and Gunner. I'm not sure this would be the choice I would make for him, but he does have access to Sidewinder, Counter Shot, Fist Counter. Honestly, I think most of you guys are probably just going to be subbing Viking with him, keeping it a little bit simple, but I could just imagine a sub Gunner just confusing the hell out of someone out there. You know, I could see someone wanting to make a full Gunner comp and missing a Gunner. They got all that missile attack plus. Why not throw Durando in there and just throw everybody off, right? So again, he's not he's not optimal for this, but I could see him going with this build, and I think it would be really funny to come up against one who was like <laughs> using the gunner abilities. As Monk sub, he does have access to store. He gets fist adept, which will be increasing his striking attack. He also gets some more ranged attacks here, which are like rock breaker or a blast. Honestly, I don't see you using his monk sub ever. Again, never say never. Maybe someone's going to come in here and be like, Doctor, you are completely wrong. You need to sub monk on him for this reason that you didn't know about. Could be possible. I think what we're more likely going to see is we're just going to see him subbing Viking with that low agility running in and trying to one shot opponents with launch or do as much damage as humanly possible. He also has max HP up, which if you are just running in and doing that, you probably want to set because you're not going to have a need for that striking attack. The other passive ability he has is concentration, which will increase his range and lower his evasion. Again, I'm not sure you'll be using that either. Overall, he's a weird unit, and because he's a weird unit, he has a lot of cards and a lot of espers that you guys could use. So of course we'll be talking about Golem, right? We want max HP for the party, high HP, high defensive stats, make him survive just a little bit longer, could be potential. Ifrit with that party-wide attack up, could be potential as well. I think you're most likely gonna be seeing not a critical hit build, but it is possible he does have very high critical hit, that innate plus 35, let's say you're using the Golden Axe for another plus 28. Let's do some math here, that's really hard. 50, 68, is that a 68% innate critical hit rate? With 20% from the bomb card, for example, that would be 688. And then you have the Cactar card or the Cactar Esper as well. I mean, you could very well hit critical 100% potentially, but I don't even know if that does anything. So something to think about there. You could also do the Moraga card, which is going to be that slash attack, high stats, Odin card with a lot of damage resistance. Odin's also going to come in and have a little bit of nice attack and man killer. Iron Giant, of course, for more slash resistance. He is weak to slash, so any anything you can do to sort of reduce the damage that he's going to be taking is probably a good idea. Secret Orders up here. Secret Orders is, of course, always potentially viable. It is going to offset that agility, but it is going to make him even weaker to magic than he already is. The Bomb, as we already mentioned, for that plus 20 crit, if you do have it. Leonis Castle, if you want to make him a little bit more defensive. Cactar gives that party-wide critical hit plus 9. So if you pair that with the Cactar Esper, that's plus 29 crit. And then you can put the bomb on him. That's another plus 49 critical hit. So really powerful potential combination there. In terms of espers, we're going to be looking at Odin for that man killer and that attack. Behemoth for that slash attack up. Get that agility in there. Kind of make him just a little bit more faster. Probably just that right amount. Iron Giant for slash resistance and slash attack up. A little bit more HP. Is going to be a little bit lower agility. But with launch and going second, he's probably fine. And then, of course, Ifrit to offset that missile weakness and to give a little bit more resistance to ice, stop a little bit of those Medinas out there who are trying to come in and kill him. All right, guys, thank you so much for hanging out today. It is always a pleasure to make these videos for you guys. I do try very hard to look up all of the proper information, but if I did mess something up, please make sure to let me know in the comments section, and I will be doing my best to reply to all of the comments out there. If something is absolutely egregious, just reach out to me on Discord. Thank you so much, you guys, and I hope you guys have a great rest of your day.